Welcome to Eye on the Money, the show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as make your money work for you. I'm Ingrid Nantege. It's often said that money can't buy happiness. It's however the only thing that will pay for those bills and enable you to live that life that you so desire. Poor financial health leads to poor mental health, which leads to increasingly poor financial health and so on and so on. Research also shows that mental health issues including depression, anxiety, and certain forms of psychosis are three times more likely to occur when an individual is in debt. In today's episode, we look at how the status of your personal finances can have a direct impact on your mental health. And joining me today to discuss this topic and how to successfully overcome your financial stress is financial coach and senior consultant and money clinic, Amos Ngahu. You're very welcome to the show, Amos. Thank you. Money and depression. Do you agree with the term, money can buy your happiness? No, it can't. It can't? Um, it's, not, it's not all about money. Right. Yes. But do you think money can contribute to happiness? Well, um, it can, but if your motive is right. You know, sometimes we, we, we're looking for this money and it's basically to spend. But what's the bigger purpose? Right. Yes. Now to get into our topic of the day. Mm -hmm. Money, the stress it causes, and depression. Yeah. Just even here in Kenya, we've often read in the papers, we've heard stories of a man or even a woman mm -hmm. who stress will lead them to certain acts that might lead them to suicide, killing their families. Mm -hmm. And when you get a hold of the suicide note, mm -hmm. it's because of... Oh, my partner was demanding, my partner was nagging, they yeah. needed more money, I didn't have enough money to take care of my family. It's issues, it's, it's, uh, it's ties into stress yes. that is induced by money. I would really, really want to hear your thoughts mm -hmm. on money in relation to depression. Yeah, uh, it, it's quite interesting because um, if today you sit with people, they will tell you, I would want to make a million dollars, I would want to make a hundred million dollars. But you really, when you really go deep, to the reason why they want, um, they don't even have a, a, a proper spending plan for the money. Uh, let me give you a, a case in point. Uh, I was somewhere talking to uh, guys between 25 and 35. So I asked them, if you were to take uh, a blue pill that would take you back to the age of 10 years with all the experience and the knowledge that you have, versus you going to the age of 45 with uh, 5 billion in your account. Most of them were saying, uh, you know, Kenya is, uh, I don't know whether you understand, <laughs> Kenya maisha ni ngumu. Um, Kenya life is hard. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they say, uh, so as long as I'm alive, I need right. money to spend. So most of them are going for the five billion. Mm. But I went further and asked them, today mm. I've given you not even five billion, I've given you five million shillings. What can you do with it? And they go directly into spending. I want a big car, I want a bigger car. Probably if it was my case, I would want to do some implants on my hair, you know. And... It, it goes all the way to spending. Right. Now, uh, it may not look like it's a, it's a bad thing, but then I, I went further and asked them, so you had the five billion, you've uh, had the five billion for five years, and then you lose all of it. What would be the condition of your heart? Right. You understand? So it is both in preparation, and you're asking yourself, cause so even in my work, I help people relate with uh, situations in life. Whether you're broke, <laughs> I teach you how to handle being broke because I've, I've been there. I've, I've, I've known what it means. Yeah. All the way to handling the big money. And the way you handle both situations can actually lead you to, to stress or even further depression. Right. Yes. So to speak specifically, mm -hmm. what sort of impact, whether being broke, like you said, or having too much of it, mm -hmm. what sort of impact, if any, mm -hmm. can money have on your mental health? I want you to just properly explain it to us. Yeah. Does money even have an impact on your mental health? How can that affect you? Oh, it really does. Think about it. Let's say I am 18 years old and I'm about to graduate. And all my student life, I want to show my parents I'm not an idiot, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm bright. So the moment I graduate and I get a job, the first people to impress with my money will be my parents, right? right? And then as they advance, uh, I'm no longer telling my parents how much I earn. You only tell them the first month. Then when you realize their, their plans are more connected to you, 
your, your money. <laughs> <laughs> to your money now you move on to 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 impressing your peers right i mean your peers must know that you got a job before them right they have to know so whenever you go to a joint uh, you're the first one to to tell them you know uh, bill is on me rounds on me yes and uh, if it goes beyond what you have in your balance you go to these other apps that you can over borrow so most of it you're, you're slowly going into consumer debt by the time you're even finding a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you want to impress them they become your spouses you want to impress your spouses you have children you want to impress them and all this time your motivation for making money is about other people it's not about you so the day you go unappreciated the day you lose your job the day you lose your money it becomes a headache everybody becomes an enemy right and you're thinking now i'm a failure just because i could not pay uh, buy a beer and i used to or i could not uh, say uh, a friend of mine has lost a spouse or a relative and i can no longer contribute like everybody else so it becomes now a part a pity party of comparison that i'm comparing myself with other people and before you know it you're now getting yourself into debt you're living beyond your means and that's how stress stress comes in and if you don't handle it it becomes a depression and most of us don't even know we are depressed right yes right yes i like what you said a lot of us don't even know yes. that we're depressed and it's after meeting you that i found out there's such a thing as money depression <laughs> so now that you've mentioned a lot of people don't even know that they're depressed from mm -hmm. suffering from the usual depression that maybe could be brought about yes. by so many other things yes as Ingrid, I've gone through the cycle that you've just talked about from wanting to impress my parents, I broke mm -hmm. off, I've tried, and then I'm, I'm stuck in a rat. Yes. What are some of the telltale signs for mm -hmm. me to know mm -hmm. that I'm suffering from money depression? How can I tell? Are there signs to even signal you, or it's during, with that suicide note when I'm finally okay. six feet under, the people will say, oh my God, yes. she was actually going through something and we didn't know. Uh, wow. Well, uh, most, most signs of depression or stress-related uh, signs are more the normal ones. You'll find someone wants to isolate themselves, especially when it comes to spending. They don't want to be involved. Those are the people that you will put in a group that you want to contribute towards something, and they don't even they wait for midnight to exit the group. You know, uh, these are people who will totally want to be by themselves. Number two, they are very irritable, especially when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. That's a time you'll find, especially men, will want to stay out late you know one case i was dealing with is the guy leaves work at 4 30 he has no co-curricular activities he has no f he's very boring by the way right he's but not a social person no but he will go and park somewhere near the estate and he will even sleep in the car till wow. 8 30 9 when the kids have gone to bed and know this the wife will go to bed and then he's totally avoiding any expense he was even switching off his phone. So you realize that you're now avoiding anything to do with expenditure. And then you'll find appetite goes down and uh, the opposite is true as well. So if you're a couple, you'll find, and you're going through the same, you'll find probably one would want to be eating more. So sometimes they will add weight mm. and others will lose their yeah. appetite. And I know the two don't go well because now they'll start criticizing each other. Right. Same with even uh, sex drive. One will want it more because it's a way of dealing with stress. The other one will not want it. So if the lady does not want it and the guy wants it, to him it's rejection. So it even makes it worse. And that again t goes to um, anger. You're easily ticked off, you know, and that's how even domestic violence comes right. in. And it's until you understand these signs that you're able to understand that uh, a, a close family member, a spouse, a son or a daughter is going through the same, you will never get to understand it. Right. Yes. So, which brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. Everything that you've mentioned, all those symptoms, all those signs, yes. how does someone get to that point? And you scratched the surface on this where you talked about maybe poor spending, wanting to impress, but maybe someone who doesn't fit in that category, I'm mm -hmm. someone who doesn't succumb to peer pressure. So, mm -hmm. how does one get there? What mm -hmm. are some of the causes? Mm -hmm. How? What are some of the practices? Some, what does someone do to get into that point of money depression that mm. it even affects their entire life well um sometimes it could be um it could be there was one particular case i was dealing with uh, and this company actually hired us to talk to their people because they were uh, laying off about 300 employees and then that employer was quite wise because he got a counselor 
and a financial coach. So we would go there, the HR would read out the names that are being retrenched, and then we'd go to a separate room. I realized, number one, if you lose your job, it comes with losses. You've either lost your job, you've lost uh, money, and you didn't address it, you know? And people think, I can always get another job. But remember, we are human beings. For instance, Ingrid, you have colleagues here who know you. So the first thing they're thinking when you receive a letter is, oh gosh, we will not see her again. How about her children? How about her family? We don't deal with it. Right. So it comes mostly when there is a loss. And going back is the poor preparation to these things. Mm. One of the things that people ask me, how do I become rich? I'm like, yeah, right. Probably you need to be broke to learn how to, <laughs> to handle money. Right. Yes, because it's, true. It, it's, it's, it's a process. The more you, 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 you fail to understand that life is not a straight line. Today you're broke, tomorrow you're, you're rich, you understand? Today you're full of debt, they even call you Dennis, Swahili. and then tomorrow <laughs> people owe you money, you know? So you are, you're handling a different, a different uh, scenario. Right. So you have to be very wise in knowing how to handle these scenarios, even how to handle people. Hmm. You've seen people that you even owe 200 shillings and they're coming with pangas. Yeah. People who it's you might- It's my 200 shillings. Exactly. I want it back. Yes, and you know what they say about debt? What? That is like, uh, they're like small children. Yeah. The smaller they are, the more noise they make. <laughs> so <laughs> they make more noise than 10, These guys will come to you with machetes, you, you know? Right. So you, we have to learn, we have to teach ourselves to learn this. And that is why you have to go through debt. Right. At some point, you have to owe people money. You have to know how to deal with it. Whether you'll choose the Kenyan way of switching off your phone and removing your battery, <laughs> or you know, b b being proactive and telling your, the people you owe money, listen, I don't have money, but this is my plan. Mm -hmm. So we have to deal with these situations. So whenever there's a change, whether positive or negative, in your financial status, you need to learn how to handle it. Because either way, it will, take, it will lead you to stress. We've seen people even, uh, the opposite of that, making a lot of money, but because they were not counseled on how yes. to use the money. Mm -hmm. They even, they, they even run away from home because the demands are too much. Now, with that said, and you've yes. said it yourself, you need to learn how to deal with this. Yes. You need to learn how to handle this mm -hmm. on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't even know when they're depressed, they don't know that they're depressed. Yes. Until someone, like a professional, will call out the signs for them. Yes. So on an individual level, as someone who's going through depressed or stress mm -hmm. as a result of my money habits, what can I do? What are some of the things that I can do to get myself out of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, there's, uh, there's the advantage of, uh, of, of, of depression, which may uh, need clinical, right. uh, clinical uh, approach. And, uh, but for me, because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a counselor, mm -hmm. let, let, not, let, not, let that be very clear, I'm not, I'm not a counselor. Right. But I can only speak about how you can avoid it in terms of uh, any decision related to money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, can we consult? Mm -hmm. Is there that one person that we can always talk to? And, uh, and this is where now we bring on board emotional intelligence. You have to understand when someone is giving you advice, from what angle are they giving you? Right. Because most of us will go to our parents. Whatever systems your parents used, because uh, for instance in Kenya, mm -hmm. if your parents bought a lot of land a while ago, right and uh, you've gotten some, probably that is working. That has been working for them. Mm -hmm. But right now you're looking at your salary. It can't even, even if you, you are to borrow, it can't give you enough for you to invest in a place that you want. Mm -hmm. So always understand that you cannot get your financial advice from everyone. Right. You understand? So where you get your sources is very important. So find someone who you can talk to, uh, educate yourself, and again, Look within yourself. Appear to meet an idiot when it comes to money. Right. Yes. Everybody has their own uh, their own uh, abilities. They have their own talents. They have things that they want to do. So actually, my work is to help you get there faster. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you have to know where you're getting your. your so how then can I avoid getting to this place? 
for one. What measures can I take? How do I just... Because <laughs> money is difficult and you know it. Yes. Even the people with the greatest financial discipline struggle at times because, you know, needs come out of nowhere. It, yes. You come to a point yes. where you're stuck. Mm -hmm. So how do I avoid getting to a place mm -hmm. that could lead me could lead to an even to. darker place? All right. I, I give two solutions for that. Uh, basically, emotional intelligence and managing distractions. Right. I know the oldest story that has been told is you need to budget for your money. Mm -hmm. But I have come to understand when you understand your money personality, because there are money personalities, right. uh, m most uh, the two major ones are money holders and money spenders. Mm -hmm. Trust you me, I'm a spender. Yeah, I would like you to explain that so people understand. Uh, yes. They're, they're, let me just explain the two major ones. Okay. Uh, holders, these are people who are very shy when it comes to spending or investing. They will even carry food to Sounds like work. keep their money in a mattress. They want to know where their <laughs> yes. money, they monitor their yes. money. It's not even under the mattress. <laughs> You'll find someone has uh, an average salary, but they have saved, literally saved over the years, millions in the bank account, and right. it's just lying there. Uh, the other side is uh, spenders, who, uh, if you put them in a room, them and money, one of them has to go. Yeah? You know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of those. <laughs> Me too. So for such, when you understand your money personality, you'll be able to know that I need to understand that I need to manage my distractions. So when you talk about a budget, in my book I've talked about a simple budget. Mm. That budget is actually biased towards people who want to actually set aside more money for investment. So our traditional way is tax is deducted as, at source. And then as you go, you dig directly into your expenses. And then uh, if you're a Christian, others are negotiating do we tithe from the gross or the net. And then right. eventually, uh, you're wondering uh, where, where does God come mm. in, in all this. Mm. One of the things that I tell people to do is that the moment you get your pay, mm. you have to prioritize. Am I saving in a saving society? Can I take the 10% right. or the 20% I'm supposed to save and remove it first? Yeah. Because if you walk to the supermarket down here and you go and you have your ATM, trust you me, you will not have a limit. But if you take cash and you say, I'm only going to spend 3,000 shillings on shopping, trust you me, you'll be weighing between a flour of 80 shillings and 81. You'll pick the one for 80. Yes. Why? Because you have limited cash on you. Right. That's how you manage your distractions. And even the other big habit I've noted in overspending is how people give out money. You want to give to impress, you have not budget, budgeted for it. Right. So it has to be intentional. You have to manage your uh, distractions in a way that it's favoring your spending. Emotional intelligence is don't go investing and giving people uh, to impress them. You have to understand. Even parents, sorry to say, you realize that our parents will put their plans according to Ingrid's Paisley. Yes. They actually know how much you earn. Yes. Who told you they must know what you earn? Oh, we, what? <laughs> they mustn't. I mean, I mean, you, you see, we're in a generation whereby uh, it's you and I to change this. Uh, we're in the donkey years, mm -hmm. so we are carrying everybody's yes. luggage. You mm -hmm. need to support your parents, you need to support your own family, and you mm -hmm. need to take care of your retirement because yes. your kids won't. So you have to balance. Right. If I'm giving my parents, I'll tell them, you know what, I used to give you this much, but it's not going to be regular yes. because there's things that are coming up. That is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. You have to know where to put aside your money. You have to know what to avoid. Amos, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I'm sure you really, even I personally, I never really, when I thought, when you even read about these things, you mm -hmm. never really create the link yes. between money and mental health. Yeah. And this show has been very, very advisorial. And I'm sure our audience back home has picked one, two or three things when it comes to their money habits and just doing the right thing to avoid going to a dark place. Mm -hmm. We've come to the end of the show, but I hope to have you back on the show very, very soon. Thank you. As usual, I'm going to leave you with the financial tip of the day. Take time to clearly define your financial goals and understand your values, both as an individual and as a family. Defined goals help us understand if our spending habits are pushing us in the right direction, while our values help us determine if our goals are realistic and meaningful. Also, there may be conflicting values within a relationship or family, which can cause a lot of stress. Getting everything in alignment relieves stress, reduces interpersonal friction, and makes financial decision-making much easier. Unfortunately, that's where we wrap up 
tonight with Eye on the Money. However, you can keep the conversation going on our social media pages at Metropole TV KE on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I've been your host, Ingrid Nantige. Have a very wonderful evening. <laughs>